folks, welcome aboard Tuesday Night Murder Hobo Inc. Live. Uh, welcome aboard. This is the Socium Project, so all you world builders out there, congratulations, you are in the right spot. Uh, let's get everything out of the way. Follow us on Twitter. <laughs> Shoot us an yeah, email, right. Hobo. Fuck Twitch, I'll say it already. Uh, I don't know <laughs> we what may get back this. there. We may, uh, but this but is you're right. Anyway, uh, follow us <laughs> on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. Uh, check out our Podbean account. We will not be silenced. Uh, if you want to be on the show, uh, no, tonight, uh, this week is not a one shot. So not a good this, night. Week. This is a campaign week. So yeah, yeah, nothing open is. next Saturday. So uh, we'll check that out after Cred and Calamity. Uh, if you're in the mood for Math Rocks, and who doesn't need new math rocks? Go ahead and run on over to Twitter. Hit up at Pirate Dog Dice. Uh, see if they got the time, the inclination, and the desire to do that. Also, if your game stinks, unlike ours, ours smells like roses and success. Go on over to oddfishgames.com. Check out their adventure scents. They have over 60 of them. Most are pretty good. Some you give to people that you hate. Uh, Twitch, you'll probably be getting a box of <laughs> you'll be getting just to kiss <laughs> my ass. Uh, again, wow. if, if you want to uh, be on the show, mhobo inc, Twitter or Gmail, let us know. This is the Socium Project. This is how we build the world. Let's go ahead and introduce you to the other three DMs who are going to entertain you for the next hour. Carol, you are up first. You are on the top. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carol. And uh, I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, and commission mini painter who who is not banned on Twitch. Who's not been accused Twitch. of fraud? I've not been accused of fraud because God knows I, I'll murder somebody if that happens. Well, apparently it does. I mean, I did a little research today, and after this all happened, and apparently this happens. So, um, I was hoping. Uh, let's see. So my Twitch handle, I feel so awkward saying it, is uh, <laughs> at muses underscore touch. I stream mini painting uh, Mondays at 7, Wednesday to, at 8.30, and Saturdays at 12.30 p.m. Oh, Eastern time. And uh, I, on here, you can find me on the Craig campaign, which is going to happen this Thursday. Can't friggin' wait. There's a big change coming to my character, so... You're Is it bigger? No, yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> no, no. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, there's a bigger a change coming to, party to, kill. to DJ's <laughs> character. It's called a rolling TPK, actually. Nice. Uh, at least it's that's coming. what I call it. <laughs> a rolling TPK. Uh, no, there'll be a bigger change coming to DJ's character because he did his character did die. Goodbye, Bran. It made me cry in stream. Whatever. So, yeah, that's all about me. <laughs> David, same question, different answers. Well, hi, I'm David, and apparently I'm not live on Twitch. So <laughs> add salt to the wound tonight. I um, know, right? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Oh, it hurts my soul. Anyway, <laughs> we're here on YouTube, so that's much better. Anyway, uh, yes. So I'm David. Uh, yeah, here tonight as part of the Socium Project. I am also on our Cacophony show, uh, as well as our Calamity campaign, both A side and B side. A side, I play uh Yngwie and beside i play crow and on cacophony i am zadar the arcane trickster uh every once in a while i'll come on for uh, a one shot i've been kind of mia on the regular between the rolls because life i've been transient so anyway uh i'm here tonight and yeah frank's mouthing me something so anyway <laughs> hi i'm david i'm here and yeah Proud to be part of Socium. <laughs> yeah, I think the FBI is still looking for David. It's he's clearly in a hotel somewhere. Jason, oh, yeah. you're up. Wait, what? Uh, who are you? <laughs> what are you doing here? Why are you here? Are you the vice president candidate? Given given the recent uh, uh, un, you know uncovering of fraud, I, I think I should just plead the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, are we all going to go to jail now? The word is conspiracy. Oh, like conspiracy. <laughs> you know, you know, Frank. Frank, they won't have to go far to arrest you. <laughs> you know, that's why I say this is 
it's never me. It's us. So I'm throwing it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all so going wait, in too, wait, Carol. Should I, should I wait for, wait, is that sirens? Wait, no. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That was. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm Jason, no last name. Uh, and I, <laughs> I just participate on the uh, Margu campaign as copious full bidders, the, the uh, gnome and occasional GM. Uh, but you can find more of our work at drzero.com, drzeropresents.com, where you can find, I, I am working on the uh, Volbitters Brewery homepage. Nice. You've got what about got the, the Twitch shirt. channel? The <laughs> it, will not, yeah, it will not be broadcast on the Twitch channel, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, you uh, can joke about it, Jesus. That's right. Hey, you know, what are you going to do, cry? Folks, this is the Socium Project. We've been working the last four months at uh, different nations in a world map that we've built. Each one of us is going to go ahead tonight and present to you a little tidbit of cultural uh, interest, uh, be it geography or some other holiday kind of thing. So uh, hopefully you can glean something useful for your own campaign. Uh, feel free to steal it. We don't mind. Uh, that's the joy of D&D. &D. Uh, we will start with Jason. Jason, what do you got for us tonight and uh, which one do you have? Uh, yeah, so I, I have two uh, for you this evening, and I'll do the first one. Uh, so this one is a broad world, not specific to the countries I did, but in the sea that's just south of the countries I did, uh, it was labeled the Breaking Sea. There are two geographic features that uh, were created for that area. One is, and it's all part of the Breaking Sea, so it's south of uh, Ilya, Iliastal, um, and it is called the Fingerlings, which is a series of rock formations that Sailors broadly think look like a hand reaching out of the water, fingers of a hand sticking up through the water because they're in groups of three to five. And they present a, a uh, treacherous passage for ships that are trying to cross the breaking sea because they can, depending on the wave action, they can be somewhat hidden. Some stand higher than others. So ships are uh, very unwise for ships to cruise there through there without very good maps. Um, Legend has that they are giants that have been frozen and turned to stone under the water. Whether that's true or not, no one knows. They just know that it's a current issue. The bigger threat through the Breaking Sea, <clears throat> those sort of ring an area of doldrums that are right in the middle of the Breaking Sea. And so the doldrums, as, as our, you know, the eponymous name uh, implies, ships get into the doldrums. If they are unfortunate enough to start cruising into that area, they will uh, be uh, stuck because there's, they will become becalmed. There's no wind, very little wave action. It's almost entirely still in that area right in the middle of the breaking sea. Uh, and so the term breaking is, can be applied to the fingerlings and the impact as on ships, but it's more commonly referred to the doldrum area because the sailors that enter that slowly go mad as their food stores run out and they're stuck in a becalmed area. So the breaking sea has two meanings, the ship being broken upon the rocks of the fingerlings and the minds of the sailors being broken in that doldrum area right in the middle of the breaking sea. It's not uncommon for a derelict ship to eventually be pulled out of that area, drift back into sea lanes and have no crew left aboard, a uh, mystery as to where they go. So that's, that's my first one. Uh, I like it. Questions? Um, David, questions? Uh, the doldrums, is it kind of like a, like a Sargasso Sea kind of thing or something like that? Yeah, very similar, that? very similar to the doldrums in, <clears throat> in the real world, where mm -hmm. once you get into the area, the, the climate just does not contribute to the, the movement of a ship. So unless you can right. have oars to actually row yourself out, you could be trapped there uh, Essentially, until you die, or you're banned by Twitch, one or the other. One or the other. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess which one will come first. <laughs> you just never know. Mm -hmm. uh, and I am trying to unfiddle uh, what I'm doing here. There uh -oh. we go. Hey, that looks much better. It's a Here mess. It's, it's been a rough day for me, even oh, wow. before oh, it's uh, been Twitch. A so. Yeah. Fucked up week too. Uh, Carol, questions for Jason on this one. 
Oh, all I could think of is like you said these rock formations the finger like are they just natural rock formations or did something form them into their unique shapes yeah uh, good question you know that at, at this point in time it's it's not clear uh, you know there's uh, more legends that abound that say they were you know actual creatures that have been turned to stone uh, that goes oh. back harkens back to zero year potentially uh, so there may be a link to the zero year catastrophe and that this is somehow related to creatures that truly did it turned to stone in that area as they were coming up out of the water but it is also possible they're simply volcanic rock formations uh, long uh, cylinders that are coming out of the sea it's so anyone's so. guess erosion I suppose they could be eroded that way well, now, is this in the middle of the breaking sea? It is. Yeah, it's sort of in that. It, it circles that really deep water area that you have on there. You <laughs> the lanes are sort of on either side of that. And then the doldrums are in the, sort of that middle pocket of, of shallower water you have in the breaking sea. So are you thinking maybe Atlantis kind of thing, just submerged or just volcanic rock? Uh, so my my thought was at this point, it's probably just rock, uh, but again, with the zero-year major mythology that's slowly forming across all the participants, it would be very easy to have them be something more than that that is truly frozen in rock uh, that came out during zero year. And I haven't ruled it out, but I, I don't have any specific plans to change that unless the group says, hey, why don't we go ahead and move it this direction i like the idea that it's that sailors are very superstitious and believe them to be fingers of some creature nice without them actually being a creature because the the doldrums themselves are a significant threat to a ship if they're if they're not navigating that area very uh, closely and you mentioned that some ships return to port crewless they'll return yeah they'll drift back into the shipping lanes crewless after coming through that the breaking sea. And so there is this air of mystery as to what happened to those crew. You know, <clears throat> like like has happened in the real world. You get these ghost ships that come out. Is it because the crew itself ultimately self-destructed and uh, either killed themselves or jumped off the ship and um, killed each other? Or is something taking them off uh, in this doldrums area of the breaking sea? Is something going on in there? It's more metaphysical in nature or supernatural in nature that is taking them off, especially. And that contributes to that mythology around the fingerlings that surround the breaking sea. So who gets to keep the ship? Uh, well, salvage rights all exist. You know, every country probably has its own idea of salvage rights. Uh, certainly if they move north of the breaking sea, Ilias Dahl was probably going to claim them. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Ilias Dahl has established its nautical boundaries to be several hexes uh, in all directions. So nice, I like that. That's that's good. Gives a nice Bermuda oval kind of feel to it. I like that. Reminds me of like the last voyage of the Demeter or something like yeah. that. It's vampires, vampires. Vampires. Nice. I like vampires. Oh damn it! Vampirates. Why didn't I come with that? I should come up with vampires. <laughs> Nice. Uh, David, you're up next. Which country are we talking about? Okay, we are talking about Mistra, and it's down in Zone Y. So, and I still got to get you those uh, those features or whatever to plot on the map. Uh, let's see. Okay, that's us. So, I am the peninsula that is uh, uh, to the right. And, uh, yeah. Basically, what I have come up, up with is cultural geography uh, for this show. And uh, with Mistra being uh, a tropical climate, one of the things that, that comes to mind is gr uh, growing up in New Orleans with the season of carnival. <laughs> I was also thinking carnival as in the real world in Rio or someplace like that. So basically, it would be a cultural celebration more along the lines of like carnival uh, in, in the real world. 
it's a it's a festival. The the Aladrin are they they have like fey ties. So one of the things that I when I think of fey, I also think that they're like revelers. They 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 celebrate performing arts. They celebrate uh, just I don't know just a just an overall. They'll pick an event like say something like the uh the the um the ending of the winter solstice with like the coming of the spring or the summer um solstice or equinox and that would herald in like a a season of revelry revelry and that that that's what's going to be happening in mistra at this time and the organized cities it's not just a particular uh town it is it is it happened because there'll be several uh cities and towns within mistra they all celebrate at the same time so kind of like we do with carnival around the world whether it be italy uh brazil or something like that carnival has religious ties to it uh the season of revelry will be more towards i want to say uh druid druidic uh you know, fey ties, you know, to the fey wild and things like that. So, like I said, it'll be heralding in a celebration uh, towards the changings uh, from winter into spring season. Uh, with it being uh, uh, a tropical climate and things like that, one of the other things that I was thinking is more of like the carnival like celebrations with like parades and just uh, festival dancing and things like that. One of the things that I came up with was like a holiday around the same time called Symphonia. And basically that would be like, I want to say a brief time, like two weeks of just uh, a celebration of music and performing arts. And it all ties within the season of revelry. Uh, that they have in Mistra. So that's what I've come up with that that area for that particular time. Uh, also with the coming of spring, one of the things that I brought up was um, a, uh, a, another holiday, which would be called um, Aborea. And basically it is like a botanical celebration. Uh, think of it as like, um, you know, there's celebrations and in the, the larger more, uh, cities, there's like the ball of blossoms where everything is just flower related. It's almost like uh, the Rose Bowl parade or something like that, you know, with uh, huge, huge botanical floats and things like that through the city. Uh, uh, fashion and uh, I just want to say just about everything is decked out in just flowers and floral patterns and stuff like that. So again, heralding into the spring. And as we go around with our round robin, I'll be uh, the next area that I'll be going into is something again, spring related and will be significant for that region. So when we come to that, I'll, I'll talk about that. But that's what's happening in Mistra. So like I said, there's the carnival-like celebration and Symphonia, which is like the music festival. So cool. Jason, questions. Yeah, I was trying, David, I was trying to I was trying to picture it in my my head with that, you know, the sort of the mix of the uh, New Orleans celebration of Mardi Gras and mm -hmm. you know the, the South American uh, carnival celebrations. But I was trying to get a picture of the the environment in which those are going on in Mistra, could you provide a description? I know it's a it's sort of this, this tropical area. Mm -hmm. What what are these towns or cities? How are they set up? Are they big urban environments that this is going on in? Or is it more uh, arboreal sort of, uh, you know, garden? Uh, what's, it, what's it sort of look like in terms of the environment? The, the answer is yes. <laughs> Think of it along the line as something like, again, like South America city in South American cities like uh, Rio de Janeiro, uh, the Mediterranean, uh, of course, uh, with uh, Italy and Spain, as far as like that type of setup is for the cities and architecture and 
uh, let's just say infrastructure and stuff like that, canals okay. to travel on and stuff like that. So it's, uh, if there is a celebration, yes, it would be happening in streets and as well as like venues within the city and stuff like that. Now, as far as like more arboreal, probably in uh, any outlying towns from the big cities and stuff like that, that would be more of more lines, say like a maple like festival and stuff like that, something uh, smaller you know, and not as grand as people just swarming into the cities, you know, for this whole celebration. Like I said, revelry uh, happens throughout the entire nation and not just in the cities itself. So. And is, is it mainly, so in the, the, the uh, fauna areas, is it mainly still dense jungle or is it, a, a, what's, what's the actual area like has the country yeah. clear cut a lot of this in the city or is the city really built through a, the jungle a, around the the cities things have been clear cut and uh within the the other i want to say surrounding smaller i i don't know what would be the term i don't want to say i guess villages would rural. uh yeah rural area uh those are more like imagine in it's a shame what they're doing in South America, but the clear cutting and stuff like that for agriculture and stuff like that. It's Flash like that, burn. but but it's more on a sustainable, uh, uh, more of a sustainable nature. They're they're clearing the way for growth and for uh, agriculture and things like that. But there is a druidic influence, so everything is about sustainability and stuff like that. It's not taking more than more. Uh, you know, destroying more of, I want to say, the, the flora or whatever to make room for agriculture than is absolutely needed, you know, without the potential for uh, regrowth or anything like that. So uh, that's part of one of the industries and in with, um, with Mistra itself is that within this sustainability and clearing for agriculture, there's the process of like timber and lumber for, I wanna say crafting of furniture, perhaps even building of ships and stuff like that. Cause we're on a peninsula like this, you know, going into like a, a, a mainland, it, I guess you would say at the upper part of the peninsula. So, so that, that's basically, if you were to think of Mistral like, like that, it is, it is more like, I want to say, like Feywild meets, like, like I said, like, you know, South America, um, Central America, with influences of like Spain and Greece and Rome and stuff like that, as far as it. So that would apply to industry and stuff like that, what it was like in the times when those cultures were emerging and stuff. So if that makes sense. It, it does. I, I'm trying to, I'm getting an image of what it looks like in terms of the, and it may not be exactly what it is, but I, you're, you're mentioning those South American influences and that's what's coming to my mind is, you know, the sort of the step pyramid. Yes. Uh, full, heavy, heavy uh, jungle, except for the areas that have been cultivated. Uh, so everything else is still very wild and when you mentioned that and with step pyramids and stuff like that, yes, think of that. I can't think of the actual like real world ziggurats. Uh, well, ziggurats, ziggurats, but like, but of the area yeah. and stuff like that, like Peru Machu or something Machu. like the Machu Picchu and things like that. And I mean, they wow. have other names for it. Yeah, yeah. So, so it would be like that too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. I was, I was trying to picture what you were, how you were describing it, and get a sense for which. It took me a while to to really kind of, kind of like try to focus in on one aspect of it. I had so many influences because, it, you know, with my travel in real life, it's just like, okay, how can I really bring this, you know, this this culture into it, and and to make it work in this tropical environment. And the, those are the best examples that I could come up with. Just as a side comment, I'll stop, uh, stop talking. <laughs> no, that's yeah. okay. That's why we're here. But that's what, that's I exactly why we're here. What you're um, suggesting though, David, I, I know my process of world building, it usually begins with a couple of key concepts of what I think the culture is like. 
Mm-hmm. Usually rooted in some amalgamation of real life historical cultures, like we all do to some level. But once you have that, it it is that then for me grappling the language. How is the language constructed around sure that environment? And, and I think that's a huge benefit in world building when you can do that. And it doesn't have to be exact. You know, having something that's exactly a reproduction of Rome or exactly a reproduction right. of, of of Imperial Japan or something. Um, is is a great starting point for a lot of folks because they have something to latch onto. They can visualize it, they can see it, their imagination can take it from there. And then how do you evolve it as a as a DM or a world builder becomes a critical piece. So I, I really appreciate the fact you're bringing those actual travels and your experiences into that environment. And I just realized you're down there at Y. I think I picked up Z, which is the one just to the Northwest. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, your climate is similar in some ways than than mine. I think uh, like my upper peninsula has a little more foothills or something like in it, where I think in Z you have some of that. Uh, or am I completely off with my Zen? I, I'm uh, I'm out on that little where it's like actual swamp. Yeah. Right oh, there. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm out on that side of this of the peninsula. And it, it's interesting the direction you went, the direction I went. What's 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 interesting in terms of the geography we're talking about is both of us have hit upon the jungle aspect, but mm-hmm. two very different ways. So I loved hearing your story of it. Oh, OK. Um, awesome. And I, I'll mine. I think I've posted everything into the file, but mine's an entirely different uh, approach to the same area. So it's it provides that uniqueness to have two of us working on something that's geographically appears similar, but goes two different directions. I think. Sure. Uh, Like I said, world building is new for me. So, you know, that as a matter of fact, I mean, as opposed to anything that I've written that's published for D and D and stuff like that, that's the reason why I kind of dove into uh, real life geography to pull in for my influences for this. So but, I think it's a good, good approach, honestly, for anyone who's doing world building. Thanks. Agreed. Yeah. Carol, questions? I think that was long enough. And honestly, I, I'm it's sorry. Not really. <laughs> uh, it, it's it's I nice know, to I see don't... two different blends. Carol, what do you got? All right. So, so pick a zone, huh? Pick a zone. So while I was sitting here, because I was too stressed out before to friggin' do this, because usually I do this like, you know, an hour before a stream. Uh, no, I have, um, I did come with a couple things. Uh, so I'll start with, sure, I'll start with Elven, Elven Lands of Trascillian. Let's you get up there. Okay, so I could have talked about the face stuff again, because that is a feature. But since I talked about it before, I was like, I get to something else. So somewhere in... Uh, somewhere towards the coast, you know, maybe out on that rocky peninsula there. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, there's a place called, actually, maybe I might rename this. It, it, originally, I was thinking for like deep in a forest and lots of trees around it, but I think I will rename it. It's, it's It was called the Deep Grove, but I think I'll call it something. I haven't figured it out yet, but it'll be something. Uh, it'll be a henge because it's a henge. Um, it's a holy place to druids and other nature lovers and and even a few of the nature deities, clay clerics of nature deities and such. Um, is that it's a henge, which is, it's been around for a really, 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 really like long time. Like no one knows actually how it got there. It was there before the land was settled by the elves. Um, <laughs> I love to put in shit that's way older than people. So that you have to figure that, you know, so that there's mysteries around it that nobody knows, including how it was built. Um, It seems to amplify all forms of magic and nobody really knows why, but it seems magic is more effective there. Um, It is used for celebrations uh, of all sorts from holidays uh and weddings and all and of course all the solstices naturally you'd have to celebrate all the solstices because nature um let's see if i can read my freaking handwriting oh god what the hell did i write there uh 
Come on, Grandma. Oh, no, no, I get it, lenses. I get it, I get it. No, 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 it's just my messy writing. The hinge is so old, it was there before the earth. Okay, that's right, right. It, I keep thinking of this is Final Tap, you know, it, with the hinge. <laughs> It's, no. it's, it's, fun. I do actually, by the way, I do actually have like a Stonehenge uh, uh, miniatures. So I was like, hey, I can actually build it. <laughs> exactly. um, so uh, it predates, of course, being so old, um, it predates the meteor. And when the meteor crashed down and basically the you know, wave came and they swamped everything around it. For some reason, this little chunk of land that's sticking out there survived with this support, you know, magical hinge sitting on there. So there's one of the mysteries of it. How did it survive? Uh, let's see. It, it holds, a, yes, it survived. It holds mysteries of how it was put there to why it survived. Um, uh, scholars do believe it might have some sort of a connection to the stars, like it could have been built as a, I don't know, what would that be? Um, I can't think of what you call that, where you can actually go and space pick out. Port. No, it's not a spaceport. It's not a pyramid like. In, uh, like um, an uh, observatory or yes, observation Yes, something thing. like that. I'm not sure yeah, because that, that's where I thought you were going with it, that it was has something to do more with like, uh, charting celestial he, phenomenon. That is a one possibility. Okay. That's one possibility, or it could be a clock, or okay. uh, or or a calendar. Basically, you know, um, like our own. I believe our own Stonehenge during the solstice is that doesn't the sun kind of come through and hit a certain spot mm -hmm. on it? Yeah, during the yeah. equinox. Yeah. yeah, so like it comes through. Yeah, so. It kind of does that, or it could be a combination of all, but nobody knows because no one was around when it was built. So basically for GMs and such, I like to leave things open for their own interpretation, um, but give them ideas on what to do with it. So, you know, you could use it for whatever, you know, mysteries you want to put uh, put on it because hey, no one knows. How, how big are we talking for the hinge that you're describing? Good. I would say good. I probably like Stonehenge size. That's pretty good size. I mean, you can fit a lot of people in there. So, um, yeah, no, the something along. The amphitheater. Long, maybe, not quite, maybe not quite that big, but but uh, maybe a little smaller than like an amphitheater size, but not much. I mean, it's big and the stones are big. You know, I was like, I was, that was definitely thinking Stonehenge or my miniatures in the other room that are a hinge. And are they just standing stones or are they like Stonehenge where I, the name just escaped me where it's the actual T-shaped? Yeah, some of them, yeah, they're built. Yeah, exactly. As I said, I'm also, if I, if it, well, they're in my other room, but it said, I do actually have, uh, Reaper came out with a set of, Literally, it builds a hinge and it has the, the stones that are, you know, like, uh, I guess you could, what the heck are you called? Like, oh, an yeah, there's a yeah, there's a mm. name for them, but it just escaped me at the moment. Yeah, it's not just standing stones, so there are other cross ones and things. Okay, I mean, you know, like, and like that too. I mean, it has more or less survived, but there's a few stones that have fallen, you know, fallen down, and you know, there's definitely missing, but. It's not hard to figure that it's probably more complete because there's something that said there's some sort of magic there that is holding most of it together. It's possible the cataclysm probably knocked down a couple of the stone, you know, that, that big wave that came through probably knocked down a couple stones, but but it didn't really do much damage. Is anyone allowed to go into the henge? Yeah. And are there repercussions? No, no, it's you it's used well. All right. Oh, you mean like anybody, anybody? Uh, considering this is in the kingdom of Treskillian, they, they really kind of, they don't want outsiders there, but they don't really like outsiders too much in, deep in, that deep into their lands anyways. But yeah, they kind of, they kind they definitely uh, don't like outside. I didn't even think about that. But that's a good point. They wouldn't like outsiders, uh, humans, uh, other races uh, going there unless they're invited. Of course, now, that's always a possibility. Now, is there some kind of connection between the henge and the portal? Because don't you have a um, I do. portal near Mirtherium? No, it's a, well, yeah, it's sort of, it's closer to leaf tangle than okay. Mirtherium. But 
Uh, yeah, I do. And who knows? Maybe I think the no, the portal is the portal is no portals new. Um, and that is literally a portal to the Fey realm. I mean, this could be, I suppose this could be since the Fey do step in between. This could be, I said, it's part of the mystery. It's nice. perhaps maybe the Fey had something to do with it, but it's a mystery. No one actually really knows. But that's a good theory. Hey, I'll write that in here. Any other questions, David or Jason? No, no. I'm um, like I said. I brought up the celestial connection to it, and and when I mean celestial, I'm talking about astronomical. Yeah, exactly. And I was uh, trying to think of what connection. you call that. There's there's a word for that, and I can't think of what it's called. It's new. Oh well, not a clue. Uh, let's move south a little bit. Let me bore the shit out of you for a few minutes. Uh, oh, if it's, is it that? Is it that? Is it what you wrote us? Because that is awesome. Oh, you mean Osmana? Yeah, that, so uh, I'm... I, talk about that. So that. Osmana is Romanian, basically, is how I went about creating it. So you've got the Carpathian Mountains there, because that's a cool name. Uh, one of the things about Osmana is there are only three major cities in there. It's mostly a rural population, and one of the traditions uh, in the rural population is something called stumping. So when two people want to get married, man, woman, man, man, woman, woman, don't give a shit. Uh, when two people want to get married, the <laughs> longstanding tradition is uh, the pair go out to where they're going to live and cut down two trees nearby this. where their residence is. Uh, they cut it, leave about a foot uh, of a stump outside they take the two fallen trees and that is what they will build their house out of but the most important thing about the stumping is that that is where the couple will take their vows each one stands on a stump hence you want the close proximity and they get married uh, once it's done they take the fallen trees begin their home think Amish Romanians uh, so everybody helps them get started on it now, for as long as they are married, uh, a lot of people will go ahead and kind of dig out the trunk and plant flowers there to make it look nice. Now, marriage can be a dicey thing, and while divorce does not occur in Osmana, something called shunning does. Uh, so Ooh, if, they really are our <clears throat> Yeah, so there is, well, they don't. They don't make them leave, though. They just stop talking to one another, which makes for a very long and prosperous marriage. But uh, if <laughs> one party is associated with an indiscretion, shall we say, uh, a wedge is chopped out. So the more wedges, the more rocky the marriage is. Now, the, the flowers or any other adornments uh, remain there until one or both parties die if they would like it that way uh otherwise uh if there is a shunning and they do happen to split away the stumps are torn asunder now as you wander through osmana you're gonna see some west virginia farmland kind of place here so you're gonna have cleared fields but when you come upon homes two stumps and that is the significance of that now in the three cities of Oras, Rigat, and Malastia, uh, it's something different. Clearly, in an urban setting, you can't have stumps every 25 feet or so. So what the urban dwellers have decided is they get <clears throat> a either a wooden cutting or a metallic cutting, say bronze, silver, or gold, in the shape of two stumps. You know, like a welcome to our happy home kind of bullshit message uh, and they hang those on their respective doors whether they be residents merchants etc now there are a pair of ceremonial stumps at most temples and as well as any of the city squares so in Rigat the capital right here in the center um, it, big city big city so it's going to have several ceremonial stumps now they are unadorned because you know you can't have people tromping on somebody else's flowers otherwise there's going to be a problem uh but they are there and then when they move into their happy home life they get that door hanging signifying that boom there you go so if you're wandering through oras and you don't see something on a door that's run by a 
uh, forest gnome, they are likely single or they've been shunned. So that's just the little kind of cutesy backstory for Osmana that I came up with. Questions? So yeah, I, I have one, two questions actually. The uh, first one is, is there any significance to, for urban dwellers to the material that they make their symbol out of? Is it, it, is, it, it is a status symbol to have your little marriage emblem be of such grandeur? Or is it pretty standardized? That's the first question. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, it, it is up to the couple. So a lot of rural aspects uh, that hold ties deep to the rural areas would likely choose wood, whereas uh, people of stature or people who, that find stature important would try and get the best out of it. I would imagine there are a few ivory symbols as well. Uh, I just told, uh, I just took uh, brass, silver, and gold because they're fairly common. This is a precious metals and gemstone area. But uh, good question. It is up to the person. So, so then the, the other question is, given all the significance that is being placed on these stumps uh, from a community standpoint, what's the penalty to someone who damages a stump or uh, <coughs> either accidentally or intentionally? Uh, or you know, someone who tears them out to build something, for instance, is, is that, how's that handled in these particularly rural communities? In the rural communities, they do not do it. Uh, if there were an interloper that came in and damaged it, say... Uh, uh, Vin I, Pirates? Yes. Vampirates. Yeah, there vampires. Uh, vampires. Uh, <clears throat> I was thinking more of... Uh, an angry husband or wife choosing to make not a wedge slice, but a wedge slice. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, that, that could incur some wrath. Uh, if it is an outsider, uh, that would be uh, a problem for the unit, either the family unit or the town unit. Uh, unlike some of the other countries I've chosen, <clears throat> there's not a lot of infighting maybe a little bit of inbreeding, but not a lot of infighting in Osmana. Because <laughs> right. uh, it is. It's it's West Virgi Romanian West Virginia. Oh, that's, my that's how Lord. I chose it. So there, there would be vampires here because it is the Carpathians. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I, I hadn't – that is a good question. I had not given it much thought. I will have to ponder that one. But uh, I would say uh, if it were an outsider uh, – there's going to be an ass whooping and the Duke boys are going to be responsible for it. <laughs> I keep hearing country roads going on in the head for the wedding. Ceremony. I'm thinking a lot of banjo <laughs> lutes, uh, kind of differential here. Uh, but yeah, and there's only the one major road uh, and that runs from Oris to Rigat to Melastia. Uh, there is another trail that runs from Brelia off the Quarter River winding its way through the mountains but for the most part it is 1800s west virginia there's not a whole lot out there and when you stumble upon nice. it if you are unaware let's say you step in oxen shit and you clean your boot off on, on one the of these stump? stumps oh, no. that could be an issue <laughs> or you know hey i've got to relieve myself i'll water the flowers <laughs> This and, wow. and, and for Osmana is not traveler friendly. Uh, they like they're they're isolationists. So this is one of those things in there that a DM, if they wish to go ahead and play in Osmana or have their players in Osmana, you know, this is one of those tidbits that maybe you should probably learn fairly quickly. Otherwise, you're just going to be chasing out like a Benny Hill video. That's funny because wildlife, I mean, there are certain species in wildlife that relieve themselves like on elevated stumps and things like that, like rabbits. <laughs> you know, and, and with that, I would say perhaps uh, the plants that they use would be like natural deer repellent or okay. uh, pretty thorn bushes, uh, something that would keep that away. But yeah, okay. I just envision an adventurer... Ah, yeah, step, of course, you went that way. Scat, and I'll just wipe it off on <laughs> Matilda's stump. <laughs> and that, 
there's your adventure. Get the hell out of Dodge before they kill you. The Hatfield and McCoys are going at it. Yeah, that's right. You know. These are forced forest gnomes you said or is this These are a forest gnomes even in the hinterland nice so yeah the, these hey. are this is the forest gnome land said uh all right so my, I, i'm gonna i'm gonna get totally morose here what happens when they to the house when both husband and wife die they'll so tear out think, the stump oh well what about the house itself uh it can be sold, but of course, if you're a forest gnome and a traditionalist, maybe you pick two stumps oh, I, on the other side and I, I build had it an into idea. a mega house. I, I had an idea, though. Okay. You could, no, instead, well, again, they have to die together. I said if they <laughs> died together, you could always, you could always burn, you could always burn the house and with them in it, burn the bodies that way. Yeah, but that's, that doesn't that's not a uh, horrible I idea. thought about that. I'm like, that's good. But except for the fact, what happens when they don't die together? You go ahead and burn them both together <laughs> still. <laughs> Just like your pets. But, oh, I mean, you I mean, you can bury, I guess you bury one for a while and then dig up the coffin and put it in there and burn the bones. Uh, it's I, over. Yeah. These are traditionalists. They just and, bury both. And, and are you... And are you Green burial. And <laughs> can part of this wedding you know, ceremony uh, be planting a couple of new trees because unless you <clears throat> replenish it you're going to run out of trees eventually <laughs> oh these are forest gnomes but you know what i i i like you mentioning that because i'm thinking when you die yeah you know you plant a sapling inside that original trunk oh nice Oh, oh, I was going somewhere. You plant it inside the body of the dead gnome. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, but you're burning you the body. You can hollow it out and then stuff it in. I can't remember if it's uh, cremation in Osmana or not. I think I addressed it, uh, but because of my setup, I can't check. But That's okay. I, I, I can't remember. Well, it is now. It's oh, canon. Yeah, One it's... of the things that uh, when I was in the funeral business, there were these bio... Uh, funerals that they were having and one is like a pod where you're kind of buried in like an egg-shaped pod along with you know a seed or sampling or something like that and it just kind of grows out yeah <laughs> what, what tv show were we watching that uh told them to put a seed in their pocket it was a it was because they were uh, interlopers yeah, that was mm. Oh, yeah, it was a Ukrainian lady. I was going to say, I well, recently gonna, it's yeah. the Ukrainians said that carry, carry sunflower seeds in your pockets, Russian yeah. soldiers. So, so, so yeah. they can uh, grow something nice. So, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll have... <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll have to, where you uh, die we'll have flowers <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll have to double check on that uh next one jason back to you which one we want to talk uh, about you know just go across the dire shoals there on your map i'll make it easy for you okay so uh this is a it's right there along that southern coast of uh Iliastal. there are you see the mountains hexes there there are a series of of what appear to be Originally, natural formations, a sheer rock face on those each of those uh, uh, hexes. And at some point in prehistory, prior to zero year, they were turned into some sort of ornately carved uh, bastions. Uh, and they are known as the Pieti Curta, or the five bastions, or five shields. And they are uh, redoubts that are carved right into the rocks of the mountain. So they're right up against the coastline. There's five of them in total. Four of them are represented in hexes that have mountains. The fifth one goes up along the northeastern side of that shoreline and is built out of the rock as well, but is built on the flat grassland. So it stands out from the others. It's the uh, thumb of the, the five. So the five shields are currently in use. They are part of Illis Dahl's own network of forts, but they were not built there. Uh, who built them is unknown, uh, but they are, uh, the, the stonework itself is masterfully done, uh, very ornate. The faces of them are, or, are ornate with uh, large statues of warriors or soldiers along the outside edges that look out into the ocean and provide part of that defense. Now, since their original construction, towns and villages have sprung up alongside those for obvious reasons, 
They, uh, and a couple of them have uh, ports that have been created out of those with, a, with docks that come out. Um, what is an interesting feature, and this continues on from those five, the five um, shields, each of those are connected by a broken roadway that is part of, again, this prehistory of whatever civilization was on this part of the continent prior to the current nation, uh, is a broken roadway made out of some sort of odd, mar odd rock that resembles a sort of a pink marble with striations of blue through it. Very fractured and broken, but in some places it still connects and is still used as roadway. It stretches between all five of the uh, bastions and then runs into the country itself. Now, it's not a, a complete road network by any means, uh, and how it was made and where the rock came from is still unknown. It's assumed to have been made by the same craftsman who built the five shields. So all that connects all the way up through and some villages and towns have been built near that roadway. And it is quite visible um, as you're traveling because this is mainly flat grassland. And so those roadways are, are quite visible and the original purpose or use is unknown at this time, but it's a distinctive feature of the landscape to see this pinkish marble uh, running across the grasslands and then connecting to those, uh, the, five, the five shields, the uh, Pieti Curta, the, the five bastions. So, so they are that, contiguous? The, the, uh, the, to the bastions? Uh, the bastions, they're uh, spaced at least 20 miles apart because they're, uh, they're skipping the hexes as we go across. Well, no, I mean the road. Does the road... The road. The yeah. road there but then it kind of disintegrates in the interior yeah so the road more or less connects the five back it's still broken in places if you've ever seen images of uh the roman road in some places where you can still see it but it's kind of in disrepair mm -hmm. that's sort of what this looks like um as it runs through the interior you catch pieces of it Ravenni has a portion of that road <laughs> that up there once you get past Ravenni, the road is uh, really just sections of it and places that don't connect any longer Cool. I like that. Questions? Uh, no, I think it's pretty cool. I think how you know, I'm imagining like the Colossus statues or something like that being used for, you know, like the Guardians that you're saying being actually used as also fortification and stuff like that. So I'm envisioning Indiana highways. <laughs> Bro broken. Okay. Bro Doesn't really broken. Broken, broken kind of grassy <laughs> area there. <laughs> How old are they? Are, are they in great shape or are they starting to, you know, have cracks and some missing pieces? The and do you have a who built it yet? Or is that a mystery? The, the who built it, it we, the assumption is it was built by the original folks, uh, uh, an offshoot of the folks that were originally uh, in the ruins that's now Starini Ashti, the, the original city that eventually the survivors the diaspora that moved in and formed Dilly mm -hmm. Stall, that their, their four founders built those originally, but there's no evidence that that's the case. The architecture and work does not appear to be the same as what was built in Starini Ashi. It's very different. Uh, there may be some dwarven influences on that more than anything else, but the statues don't look dwarven. They're, they're stretched and elongated. They don't look like any race that's known currently in terms of proportion, but that could be a, a stylistic piece. That's that's what I was gonna say. Is if they were building like in a column, it'd be a stylistic choice more anything could, else. Could what be. do they look most like? Humans? Uh, probably like an elongated uh, uh, human, or you know, as we're talking about, I'm going picture those those long, skinny gray Martians that we. <laughs> oh jeez. Right. Yeah, they're a bunch of grays. That would be good. Nice. Holding shields, you know. Yeah, uh, okay. it's hard to say if that architecture would have extended that. So most of Illistal, north of Ravenia, it floods each year seasonally. And so anything that was there before is pretty much may have been wiped out with and eroded over time. So even those roadways, part of the reason why they don't exist in the northern part of the country is just from the, the weather itself. There's a great swale that's been constructed uh, through part of the, the, the country. I always picture like a, the the Nile flooding in prehistory mm -hmm. uh, was dependent on the agriculture. Well, the floods that come in, the estuary flood most of that area to the northwest every year. And so it's wiped out everything. But the architecture in the south, Carol, to your point, is similar to the architecture of the wonder 
um, the lighthouse that's in that northern part that's on the screen. Cool. Nice. Uh, just a couple minutes left. So, David, what you got? Wow. Okay. Section we're going long. This, this no, one. we're not going long. Yeah. Uh, section C. Uh, that would be uh, Verdania. Okay, right around there. Uh, oh, right next to me, huh? This this region right here has a long, uh, like, green expanse and stuff like that. Hence the name Verdania. Uh, you know, verdant, verdant greens. Uh they have a cultural uh, holiday again uh, with the with uh, the ending of winter, beginning of spring. Uh, it is called Cavalia, and basically what it is, it's a season ce uh, celebration birth of um, one of the <laughs> things about Verdania. Uh, the humans among it think of like Rohan in Lord of the Rings, where it's horsemen and horsemanship and things like that. Hence the season of Cavalia. Uh, basically, what it is, it is uh, a celebration of the new folds and, and things like that. I mean, the stables in Verdania and are just they're like palaces, pretty much. I mean, that's how they how much they revere horses. And one of the things uh, about Cavalia is that they have uh, it's like uh, equestrian uh, performances. Uh, there's like parades and cavalry demonstrations and things like that, but also there's derby races. So that is the big thing is the running of the horse, kind of like spring in Ireland, how they have the, the races during the spring. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's kind of like that. And it's, you know, they call it the sport of Kings and stuff like that. So the Kings in Ver uh, Verdania, of course, have their champions and they race them. So basically, it's Kentucky. So, <laughs> is it Henry Cavalia? <laughs> no, Man. no, I, I might have to change the name. I was thinking of Calvary, and that's how I. Oh, no, I like that. Uh, call it Armstrongia. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, Jason or uh, Carol, questions? Just in terms of the, the horse lord structure. Uh, mm -hmm. How, what do you link it more more to? I you mentioned Rohan. Is that the direction mm -hmm. you're going with it? Yeah, that's that's the direction I'm Versus going like in with it. Mongol hung sort of right. I mean, I mean Ooh, that'd be cool. It, it was kind of I was thinking of that, like the Dothraki, you know, from Game of Thrones and stuff like that. So I don't know. It I'm still working on it. It's still a work in process, but but mainly uh again uh a horse centered culture and stuff like that without going into the tars what jeff has with his stuff you know it, it's actual horsemanship and a in a human? you know human human culture that is developed out of that yeah nice carol tell us about your sea pirates in three minutes all right three minutes yeah well all right so just nope i guess you did spell it right okay so Originally, Pompeii was not the way I had spelled, but I think it's okay now. All right, so I'm just going with the ruins of Pompeii because I haven't really talked about it. Uh, it's an undersea city of ruins that was basically formed when that massive wave hit during the meteor crashing into the ocean. Um, let's see. There, so basically, there's a lot of rumors surrounding this place. A uh, few people tried to exca excavate it, but um, they never returned, which is why only a few people have tried to excavate it. Um, but there's rumors abound that there's treasure under there. Um, you know, that there's, there's, yeah, there's treasure abound under there, but there's also rumors because no one's returned that there's probably tons of undead or there's a sea monster or maybe there's a sleeping dragon that's guarding all of that like a sea dragon that's guarding all of that treasure nice. uh, or it could be the strong currents I, I, was, I was just like i'm just basically spitballing this maybe the strong currents dragged people away you know undertow um do, 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 the rumors well that is it oh yeah but i have okay so i think I think that was basically it. Um, you know, nobody really knows what's under there because everybody who's gone has not come back. So maybe a band of 
really smart or really stupid and ambitiously brave adventurers with a carefully thought out plan could could succeed where the others haven't. How about a <laughs> how about a blue and red or a pink and road? <laughs> a what? Uh, Jason's road. What do you mean Jason's road? Wait, what road? The the road that uh, intersects with his uh, bastions. <laughs> maybe it's like the Bimini Road. Oh, maybe I don't know. I mean, so that just the ruins. I just figure is city. I mean, if there's a road that goes through everything, you mean, what like a road that goes through the mountains or under the sea, like a lava tube? Uh, maybe of- I mean. We Get really haven't decided what's there. Follies and Dyer, how they got created. Because Well, no, the Follies shelf is created by, it was all, all that was created by the meteor. Tidal surge, right? The ruins uh, is just a, is just one of, just a buried, basically is a submerged city. Very nice. But Follies shelf and all, and, and all that, you that used to be dry land. It's just that the, the ruins of Pompelium were, um, I guess you could say they're, they're, it was like a stone city, you know, or think like, you know, Pompeii or Greece or someplace like that, where it's made of marble and other things, you know, things that could survive underneath. Cool. Very nice. It's well, not, it sort of does make me think of Atlantis, you know. Well, what was the, what was the sister city to Atlantis, the one that was in that, was supposed to have gone down first? I yeah. don't It wasn't remember. Herculaneum because that was Pompeii. It was... Uh, uh, you're right. I know there's the another name, name but I don't, I don't know. It begins uh, with an L, right? It does begin with L. It, it begins with it, an L. I think, I think it yeah. does. My, I don't uh, know. My time travel is a little hazy there. <laughs> but yeah, there's, <laughs> there's probably a lot of uh, ruins under there. I wonder if Pompeii was just the capital. Yeah. Oh, you know what it is? Oh, you sorry, do have a spell. I know. You <laughs> right know. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I've had a fucking hell of a week. Actually, really? you do have a Do tell. You, you, <laughs> uh, off stream, actually. Uh, it's Palm. It should be Palm Pelium, not Poa Pelium. P O M? Yeah, P O M. Okay, I get it changed. Uh, folks, what? Uh, the yeah. worst part about doing this is. We all just have so much information, uh, it's damn near impossible to get done yeah. in an hour. Uh, and that is that is the beauty of world building. That's why the eight of us really like doing it. Uh, this has been part one. Part two will be in two weeks. Next week is just a regular uh, between the rolls, so we hope you join us then. Thursday is the cred campaign, the worst campaign that we offer. Bullshit, it's the uh, best one. <laughs> Kyle's done what Frank couldn't do, and that is kill a PC. So Oh, I could kill a PC. Oh, he can. In a campaign. <laughs> He's come close. Oh, I think mean, say <laughs> I don't know. Have you ever even killed a PC in, in a in a uh, one shot? I have. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than yourself. <laughs> yeah, not you know fact. you've killed yourself. Uh middle Frank died. Uh, but mm-hmm. that was that was more oh. responsible for his kids. I think uh I, I think uh, Noodle hosed him on that one but uh folks anyway we got a lot of shows we're still trying to work out what the hell's up twitch's ass we'll try and figure that out otherwise you can still find us on podbean you can still find us on youtube not that big a deal uh, follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy our cool crap, which I forgot to mention, uh, the link is down there. Uh, if you're in the mood for new math rocks, uh, at Pirate Dog Dice on Twitter. I am. I, I put it in order. Uh, I, I, I deleted that email. Uh, what? And then if Carrie, you want uh, I some know smells, adventure sense from odd fish games they also make something called shine system so if you want to write much more gooder than me uh, check out their shine system uh folks we hope to see you on thursday live if not uh, it'll be on memorex for you old people that understand that joke Bye. Uh, <laughs> we hope your week is better than ours we will see you on thursday hopefully at 8 p.m otherwise eh, we'll get it done Folks, yeah. for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., thanks for joining us. We appreciate your time and effort and your patronage. If you have any questions, hit us up, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. Uh, until then, let's give them the big dating game kiss and wave and say goodbye. Bye, uh, bye everybody.